Now, one thing that I've learned most recently is probably not to chop the feet on the closeout. And what I mean by okay. chopping the feet is this. Here, we're getting rid of that, okay? So on the closeout, I want to close out what their shooting hand is. Okay, I want to close out their shooting hand. If I hand. can close out the shooting hand, okay, one, it takes away their shot. The second part too is, if they're shooting with their right hand, their preference to drive will generally be what? Right. Hand. Right. Okay. So I'm almost going two birds, one stone scenario with this. On the closeout, I don't want to chop my feet. Rather, what I want to do is, I want to close out the shooting hand, right? And take away that driving lane if I do a good enough job. Now, you will know, if you close out here and you close out short and she drills a three, next time down, I'm gonna close out a little bit tighter. So I'm closing out the shooting hand, okay? I'm taking away that driving lane. And more importantly, I'm sending them baseline. But it doesn't work for the other side, right? Because we come on this side. Same deal again, I go to close out and I'm saying, I'm closing out the shooting hand and I'm taking away the driving lane, but I'm allowing middle. Because closing out and defending the ball are two completely different skill sets, okay? You need to do one before you can do the other. And the best that you way you do the first one, which is the close out, okay, then allows you to progress to then defending the ball. So, I close out the shooting hand, I take away the driving lane, I know she's less, less confident going, middle, uh, going onto her left hand. Now she rips through, it becomes a one-on-one -on -one contest, okay? If I can get back in front and cut off that lane, she's gonna pass it off, okay? If I don't get in front, then she drives middle. It is a lower percentage play for her than compared to allowing to go onto her right. But I still should be able to defend it. So that's what, one thing I wanted to highlight before we move on to this closing out segment when we talk about closing out the, the shooting hand and taking away the driving lane is that even though if we're in a perfect world where I'm saying, yeah, I'm sending, middle, uh, sending away from the middle, sending baseline, but now I'm in a scramble situation where I'm closing out, I need to play the advantage to me. So I'm taking away the shooting hand, which then means that middle lane might be available. So I just wanted to make that clear before There's we move no on offensive to the offensive players, three defensive, okay? It's just a bit of habit training. But this drill is only good if you enforce it, okay? What is it that you want to get out of this drill? It's only as good as if you're teaching them exactly what you want to have done on defense. If you let them get away with shortcuts here, there's no point doing the drill because they'll just do it during the game. So the way this is going to work is when I say go, you're going to step out here, I want you on the block. And I want you here, one foot in, okay? So you're going to be Lane line, one foot in, one foot out. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna be here, one foot in, one foot out. What I'm gonna get you to do is you're gonna run up here to the nail. And you're gonna be in nail in an open stance. Got it? So let's just do that for me first. So I'll say go, run to those spots. Yep, good, hold it there. When I say go again, you guys will be filling those spots they're just in right now, but you guys now will be closing out the ball. And what I mean by that is, you're gonna be closing out here, sending them baseline. You're gonna choose whether they're a lefty or a righty, and you're gonna send them out angled in that particular way. All right? And you, I still want you to close out, but this time will be your right hand, sending them baseline. Got it? So you're gonna close out here, send them baseline. Then when I say go again, the next group will go, the next people fill in, and you guys are just gonna join the back of a different line. Let's just see how this works real quick before we talk about teaching points. All right, you ready? Go. Good, go. 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 Now, and hold it. I don't wanna mess with you guys, but I'll take away chopping feet. So it puts more importance now on having to stop on the dime. It becomes a conditioning drill, an agility drill. It becomes something you've got to work on the gym where I can get here in as few steps as possible to that ball. So if I start by going, and then I chop, way too many steps too long. So I've got to be in a stance here right now, 
This drill's set up where the ball's on that side. This is my man. The skip pass has happened. So I should be looking to push out of my left foot here, this inside foot. I want to go short step, long step. Okay, just like a sprinter out of the blocks. I'm here, I'm engaged, I could be moving my feet. The moment that pass is happening, I'm pushing off my left. I'm gonna go short step, long step, get out the gate, and then get into this stance without my momentum going forward. So how would I stop leaning forward on a run? Any idea? How could I do a better job here of being in a stance ready to go and defend without being off balance. Love it. Get as low base. The very first thing that we did, low base active hands. So you can work on your core in the gym. It's one of those things where they talk about activating your core and shooting. Same principle applies here. If I have a low base and I stay low, the moment I come upright and I'm running, I gotta get back down again, okay? So I'm here. I'm in a low base, I short step, stride, and I want to get down in stance as quickly as I possible, get balanced, and then be in control of dictating where I want the ball to go. So, keeping that in mind now, less steps, okay? Still curling out, contain the ball, next line goes. Ready, go. Good, go. 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 Hold it. Good.